Watamote is weird. Let me specify. I don't mean in the premise or even the main character, even though that last one is debatable, but more in the overall consensus from anime watchers. Depending on who you are, when I mentioned Watamote, you either unenthusiastically admit to have watched it, know about it but avoid it, or you've never heard of it. I'm not much of a manga reader, but Watamote is one of the few I keep up with. Most who watch it either drop it or finish it with no intention to see more, so why do I like it? What makes me want to see more of the painful adventures of Tomoko Kuroki? There will be minor spoilers to both the anime and manga in this video, but it won't really affect anything overall because it is a very episodic slice of life, so if you're worried about that, trust me, nothing really will be ruined for you. Watamote follows Tomoko Kuroki, who is about to go into high school at the start of the story, but with crazy expectations of being popular because all summer she played visual novels where she ended up being admired in all of them. She has this mindset even though she has massive social anxiety to the degree that she has a hard time talking to anyone who isn't family. So when school starts, reality hits and she is a loner who doesn't talk to anyone. She still has the goal, which ends up putting her in incredible painful situations, and that's it. It's just us following the misadventures of her daily life. The series is very cringy because of the things that happen to her, either being something she causes for herself or just by pure misfortune. The anime is funny but also painful because even though there are many situations that are quite silly, others are more mundane that anyone can relate to. Like forgetting something in class and hoping the teacher doesn't call you only for them to do so, putting you in the worst spotlight for the whole class to see. Being in a situation where you're stuck with people you don't know, only for it to have an awkward silence. Even not liking people you've never met just because they seem to be having so much fun in their lives and everyone likes them. I know this one a little too well. We can laugh at the pain of Tomoko because we know the feeling, and we're laughing at ourselves because we see something we've done within her. It may come off as backwards, but I want to start with the anime and then hop over to the manga. The anime is what made me interested in the first place and is how many get exposed to the series. While having all the upgrades of an anime adaption, animation, color, music, etc., it does something more. As I mentioned before, Watamote is an episodic slice of life manga. Each chapter is pretty self contained with minor callbacks to previous ones. The anime easily could have been every episode being split into three segments, but it's much more than that. It adapts chapters from volumes 1 through 4 to make an episode. Studio Silverlink got three chapters and expertly connected them together in a very natural way that flows. Every episode takes place within a day or two and shows multiple events that happen to Tomoko. By doing this, the story feels more natural but also how they are put together adds more to the anime. Alright, let me use episode 2 as an example. It is comprised of chapters 3, 7, and 9. It's how they are used that gives much more to the story. Episode 2 starts with Tomoko listening to a yaoi CD when she gets a call from her friend Yuchan to hang out. This scene is pretty much the exact same as the manga, with a slight change being the meetup date. Hey, are you free on Saturday? Uh, I guess? With this change, what would be a quick setup for the following page is now the setup for the whole episode. After that, chapters 7 and 9 come right after, but with this as setup, it now gives Tomoko a motivation to actually go to school with excitement to find an interesting high school story to tell her friend, compared to her just getting motivated for no reason like in the manga. This actually fits her character more. With this motivation in mind, it makes her more human but also doesn't change any of the material from the other chapters. How they are set up even gives a bigger payoff to the last part of the episode. Tomoko writes down moments from chapters 7 and 9 in a way to make them more interesting to tell Yuchan, but other moments like the classmates talking about their relationships, the couple on the stairs, and the drawing happen before the meetup. She hates the couple and the relationship talk and the drawing of her is saved for said meetup. The ending makes it all come together when Yuchan says that she wanted to hang out because of her boyfriend troubles. The moments before make this hit harder. It makes Tomoko realize 
her friend from middle school has become the people she hates in high school, but also became what Tomoko wanted to be, popular. The drawing from the previous chapter is then used to make Tomoko feel better about herself because someone drew her, only for us to learn the guy drew a generic Q anime girl. The anime added more to the story and characters, only by rearranging chapters and changing lines to connect them. It does this the whole way through with a variety of different chapters of the 36 from volumes 1 through 4 to make them work in a new way. Episodes 8 and 11 are the only ones that adapt consecutive chapters linearly. Most episodes are comprised of 3 with a few being made of 2. The anime leaves out 4 so that it can wrap up. It rarely adds new material but when it does, it's very believable but it also expands on certain chapters. Doing all this and also having clever effects and transitions to recreate certain panels in a more visually interesting and impactful way, the anime surpasses the manga. Studio Silverlink went above and beyond for the anime and it isn't just my opinion. In an extra chapter, Niko Tanigawa talked about how Silverlink had complete control of the anime but asked them to participate in the production and the planning meetings, which could be the reason why chapters were put together so well. It shows how close they were to the anime, even down to the voice acting. If you ever wondered what the creators thought about seeing their cringe creation be brought to life, here's your answer. They felt awful about making Izumi Kita record some of the gross noises for the anime and saw the leader role Tomoko as more of a punishment to play. Around the last few episodes, we see moments of Tomoko not trying to be popular, but trying to interact with people and put herself out there, with one character actually acknowledging her efforts. Episode 12 is her looking back on her first year of high school, realizing how it was nothing how she thought it would be, and how she wasted it, but also not to dwell on the past and to focus on the future. The final moment of the show being... <laughs> Seriously, it doesn't even matter. While this moment is anime only to wrap itself up, it also serves as a good way to mark the end of this part of Watamote. Tomoko wanting to be popular and doing things that end up making her feel awful. The first moment of Watamote defines the anime and the first four volumes of the manga. A very inept girl thinks high school will be easy and that she'll be popular. Chapter 37 is very similar. It's all about the third year students graduating and Tomoko just seeing them off. This chapter is just a lot of self-reflection for Tomoko, with students celebrating with each other, something she longs for, even with the course of the graduation, the lyrics being about how fast time flies. But the moment that truly defines this next part of Watamote is when Tomoko sees a student all by himself, separate from everyone. She just thinks about him until she realizes that how she's been, this could be her, all alone with no one to celebrate, being a loner for the rest of high school. While the beginning moment of the story is one and a half pages to set up this cringe comedy, the use of an entire chapter to set up a big shift can also represent the longer scope of what the story will now be in comparison to the first four volumes. All of chapter 37 is just to start changing Tomoko. Her being at the graduation shows this because she states she even left her middle school graduation celebration. The chapter ends with the student leaving and telling Tomoko to do the most in the two years she had left in high school. Tomoko being alone to her thoughts wonders what the next two years have in store and with this, Watamote has finally shifted. The following chapter is the beginning of a new school year where it shows Tomoko learning from her mistakes from last year but also has her interacting with a new student in a way that makes sense but also still creates a funny yet painful moment for her. This is just a little taste of how Watamote changes. Soon after you see the introduction of one of my favorite characters, Kotomi, who is frenemies with Tomoko. Characters that are so alike yet they hate each other which just creates hilarious moments of back and forth between them. Their dynamic is so great because of how similar they are in the way they think, act, and even when it comes to the stuff they like. Kotomi is naturally integrated to the cast because she is connected to Tomoko with Yuchan and her brother, that she becomes someone who appears often. The series does a good job at introducing new characters into the story that we sadly don't see in the anime. Not because they didn't adapt it, but because those first four volumes plant the seeds that pay off later in the story. Watamote does a good job at using reincorporation, moments from the beginning of the story that we 
you actually see in the anime get used later in a new way. But what makes them so great is that to Tomoko, when the original moments happen, they are so small in the grand scheme of things that she forgets about them. The story doesn't blatantly state it to remind you of it. It's something that when you notice it, it usually adds more humor to whatever the moment is. Like in episode 2, where she overthinks the school field trip for second years, which is later a story arc or when she thinks about making a club and the people she would be with, saying she wouldn't be a lead role but that she would still be vital to them. Tomoko ending up as the leader of a group for her school trip, a group comprised of people who couldn't find other groups, her even stating there are loners like her, the chapter introduces Yoshida, Yuri, and Uchi who are all different from each other, having a unique chemistry with her. They actually get to see a bit of who she is, and Tomoko actually learns from the experience. They stay after the trip creating new and different moments that are all still funny. You still get to see misunderstandings and dumbness, but there is more to it now because it isn't just a girl by herself. She states that she doesn't want to be friends when she meets them, but afterwards they become more people she interacts with and that's it. There's now a whole slew of people she talks to every day. In the morning, in class, she's always interacting with people now. She's always growing because of this and it shows throughout the series. It's what becomes of the manga that over time she doesn't even realize that she is having an easier time talking to random students. Watamote is rarely about Tomoko by herself. While she may still think like a loner, she is always doing doing something with someone, and chapters are about her misadventures with all these people, which is actually represented in the manga covers. They actually get to see the side of Tomoko that we know as the viewer, and it's pretty great. The group she hangs out with, Yuri and Yoshida, are so different from each other, but always keep the story entertaining because of their chemistry. Yoshida being a tough, easy to anger person, and Yuri usually being in the middle and actually used to all the dumb things Tomoko does, it always kept me laughing. With all this, Tomoko is learning, becoming a better person and while it's slow, it's very natural. And while there may be moments where it looks like she may take a few steps back in progress, something causes her to get back on the right track. With all the great things Watamote does, at the end of the day, it's just about a girl who grows throughout high school. A socially awkward girl who changes with each experience and interaction with someone. Seeing her grow is something I like because me and many other people know that feeling of changing in high school without realizing it. Like how we see ourselves with all the cringy moments of Tomoko, we also see ourselves in Tomoko's growth. From a loner who can barely talk to anyone to someone who can casually talk to a group of people, this is the reason why I love Watamote. Even though it's still cringy, it's still a pretty human and relatable story of a girl growing and in a sense overcoming her social anxiety by interacting with people. Since it's set in high school, the story is split into three parts. First year being volumes 1 through 4 and the anime, and currently everything afterwards being her second year which is about to end. Up next is her third and final year in high school and I can't wait to see what that has in store for her. If you guys hit the end of the video, I always appreciate that. And if you liked it, you may want to stay on the channel because I make videos about anime all the freaking time. And here are the last two that I made. As always, bye guys, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.